Welcome to Therapist Reacts Raw, where my producer gives me something that I've never seen before and wants me just to react in real time to it. This is David and Patrick's love story from Schitt's Creek. I've heard good things about this show. Haven't had the time to watch it yet, but here we go. This is the first gift I haven't bought myself in a very long time, so uh, thank you. You're gonna be so underwhelmed when you open it. I mean, trust me, it's, it's not safe. It's nothing. What is it? Oh, it's just the um, the receipt from our first sale at the store. Um, this is not nothing. It's actually very sweet. So thank you. Sentimental gifts tend to be the best gifts. Someone... Well, that was a fun night. I'm really glad that I decided to invest in your business, David. So we've got a bit of a dual relationship here. Lovely thing to say. And I'm so glad you did, Patrick, because you really helped to turn it into the success that it is. Mm. Investor, claim. client, lovers. You can navigate stuff like that. You just gotta be careful where the lines are, what the boundaries are. Because Alicia and I are in business together, for example, but we're also spouses. Mm. Yes, that was a sweet first kiss. Thank you. For what? Um, I've never done that before with a guy. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was getting a little scared that I was gonna let you leave here without us having done that. So um, thank you for um, making that happen for us. Well, um, they're very direct and candid, and I like that. Fortunately, I am a very generous person. So, can we talk tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot on shows where people rush to sleep together, and I like that they just just start with a kiss and they take it slow. We're getting to know each other step by step. Mm -hmm. Unless they're about to hook up totally right now. Good night, David. No, they don't. Okay, Patrick. Oh, that's very sweet. I would like to dedicate this song to a very special someone in my life. David Rose. Okay. There he is. Right there. That's him. <laughs> can't miss him. <laughs> you can't, not with that shirt. Yes. I call you when I need you, my heart's on fire. You come to me. Wild and wild. Dang. You come to me and give me everything I need. He's good. Give me a lifetime of promises and a world of dream. Speak the language of love like you know what it means. And it can't be wrong. Take my heart and make it strong, babe. You simply the best. Mother David was looking around. Like, it's hard to be in these moments. They're very real and raw and vulnerable and they're beautiful. It's hard to be present because we're so not used to it. And I love when he's looking his way, his mom touches his shoulder like, no, no, sit with this. This is what life is about. These moments. I love that. That's awesome. You know what? I'm probably good to finish this up. Okay. Can I go for lunch? What? I don't know. You tell me. I just did. I'm, I'm happy to finish doing the creams. I, I don't think it's a So they have some job. sort of fight? Okay, so you're just going to stay here and not have lunch then? Or are we going in shifts? I don't know, David. I'm just trying to be professional here, okay? I think this is going to take a minute to get used to. I don't want to get used to this. I don't want to pretend like we're coworkers. We are coworkers. Okay, I just... Liked it better when we were more than that. David, I'm just trying to go off of what you wanted. You wouldn't let me finish telling you what I wanted. I was ready to get back together days ago. What? Yes. <laughs> then why didn't we? I've never been in this situation before where someone's been so nice 
to me and generous. I'm sorry, were you holding back on talking to me because you were getting gifts? <laughs> I was very upset and confused. <laughs> so upset that I barely finished the chocolates. David, this wasn't meant to be some advent calendar of apologies. It was like an olive branch to get you to talk to me. I just, I guess, didn't know how many olive branches you were planning on extending. <laughs> oh Ideally gosh. one. Okay, well now I know. Yeah, and now I know that while I was torturing myself, you were sitting at home just opening gifts. I see you like the bracelet. I love the bracelet, thank you. Um, does this mean that we are back? You know what, I feel like now maybe I deserve an olive branch or two. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> what if I gave you back some of the olive branches that you gave to me? I was lying about the chocolates, I ate them all. But I'm sure there are some... So no, you gotta do your own thing, alive. man. You gotta come up with you know your own. Gonna do? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to lunch, and you're gonna sit here and think about what you've done. Okay. I'm not used to someone being nice and kind to me. Uh, that's a telling line. There are a lot of people who get scared in relationships because they're so used to things being bad that when things are good, they're afraid. Like, if I actually invest in this, if I actually believe in this, then I can get hurt all the more, so I'm choosing to preemptively sabotage. There is no reward without risk. There is no love without vulnerability. And in order to have a committed relationship, you risk getting hurt, you risk getting burned. And it's a gamble. And you can minimize the risk as, be as best as you can by taking the time to get to know the person actually get to know them, see if who you think they are matches up with who they really are, keep your eyes open, and constantly be recalibrating in your head this idea, this image of who this person is or who you think they are, and be continually open and honest. We're not honest because we're scared, and that hurts us. We end up doing more damage than if we had actually said what we were thinking and what we were feeling. What is this? Consider this my olive branch. <laughs> I call you, I need you, my heart's on fire. This is the same song he did acoustically, right? On the guitar, you're the best, simply the best. <laughs> Can you imagine? Is the, is the store closed right now? Can you imagine a customer walking in, they're like, I'll come back later. I love that we get to see love stories like this. When I was growing up, when I was a kid or a teenager, I, you never would have seen this in a mainstream sitcom. And, it's wonderful. I can neither confirm nor deny that I've done something very similar to Alicia on multiple occasions. Like a lip sync rock out session. What's funny is he sits him down, but it's not like a lap dance or anything. It's literally, I'm just gonna lip sync this whole song to you and make you smile and laugh. And I don't wanna add more stress to your day, but I love you. So you just said that to me for the first time, knowing that it would make my day more stressful. That's correct. Because you know that I've never said that to anyone else, aside from my parents twice and one time at, at a Mariah Mar Carey concert. I know, yeah. <laughs> and I don't expect you to say it back to me right now. You say it when you're ready. It just felt right to me in the moment. You're my Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> that compliment could bring me to tears, but I'm not gonna let it. So, I would like to thank you for all the wonderful things that you said. Okay. <laughs> well, David, I gotta hand it to you. We've already sold half of our massage oils. It's like you're an oracle when it comes to the sex lives of lonely people. It's a gift. How'd it go with Ted? Oh. <clears throat> I know I'll never be able to compete with Mariah. <laughs> it like, just <laughs> kind of feels like one of those perfect moments that you dream about. Except in my dream, I'm holding a nice cup of tea. Oh. I'm kidding, I don't need the tea. No, I am making this perfect moment perfect. <laughs> And the gift basket that you gave them, that I'm hoping you paid for, that had nothing to do with you trying to smooth things over with them. 
It was just a very messy day, and I was I was trying to detangle things and and just make everything okay. Yeah. Well, you made everything okay. Not to step on the moment, but uh, <clears throat> I do have to lock up in five. Good to know that gay couples have fully arrived on the pop culture scene when their kisses get interrupted by other cast members, as has been happening to straight couples in movies and TV shows since I can remember. Come on, let the moment breathe. Just one more thing. Um, if you go into that front pocket there, there's actually something. So I used to come on this hike a lot when I first moved here, and I was uh, I was developing feelings for this guy I'd just gotten into business with, and I didn't know what to do about it because I didn't know if that guy had the same feelings or if I'd ever be able to muster up the courage to let him know how I felt. And now here he is, the love of my life, standing in front of me. This just felt like the perfect place to ask you to marry me. <laughs> All the rings. <laughs> are, are you sure? That's really sweet. Easiest decision of my life. <laughs> when I was growing up, there was a lot of there's a lot of stigma around homosexuality, and you know, I always grew up being told by various sources that it was just about. Uh, deviant sex, you know, like uh, sex is, that deviates from the norm. And, you know, it's there in the name, homosexuality, so we, we think of sex. But it's really like the big paradigm shift for me was recognizing that people just want connection. And they just want closeness. And they just want love. And they just want the same things that I want. Right? And then to me, the sexuality was no longer deviant, it was just human. You know, when you see yourself in the other, when you see yourself in the person that you think is so different from you and you realize that you're not all that different, that's where you build bridges. That's where barriers drop. That's where bigotry ends. And this is a beautiful relationship to me. These guys are, these actors are playing it so wonderfully. I've only watched a few minutes of clips here and I already feel like they're my buddies, you know? You do know that I've already seen this house, right? So then why are we here? Because I put an offer in and they accept it. What, what about New York? I thought that's where you wanted to be. I thought so too, but it's not where you want to be. And I don't want to be anywhere you don't want to be. David, I promise I won't make you so happy here. You fucking better. <laughs> Wait, so when you say you put an offer in, yes. what exactly did you do? Um, I don't really know. You might want to call yeah, the... Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to... Call look, the people. Look at that offer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at this point, who even needs a wedding, all right? Oh, I do. I need a wedding, big time. <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely David in this relationship, and Alicia's Patrick in my, like, all... <laughs> I can't believe this happened. She's like, we don't really need a wedding, we just get married. I'm like, well, I need a wedding. I'm gonna keep this very short because I, I think you already know that I would climb a thousand mountains for you. And I would make an offer on a house and have no idea so what I was doing. This. Patrick, I've never liked to smile as much as I like yours. I've never felt as safe as I do when I'm with you. Sorry, I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be commenting on it because it's so rich, I'm just drawn into it. It's not been an easy road for me, but... but this is what a healthy relationship looks always like. Always be there for me at the end of it. Makes everything okay. The commitment, the dedication, the honesty, the transparency. Patrick Brewer. The accountability. You are my happy ending. The patience, the forgiveness. Patrick, do you take... David. The differences that to could be something that you tolerate, but instead you choose husband. to celebrate. I do. And I like that they're very different. David. David?
Do you take Patrick to be your lawfully wedded husband? Who doesn't love Catherine O'Hara? I do. You know, we have me react to a lot of unhealthy relationships on this show, a lot of toxic relationships. And I know a lot of relationships look happier during the courtship phase and then things sour or become more difficult during, you know, once you're together, life happens, right? They have a beautiful courtship. One of the most beautiful things I've ever heard is that happiness in marriage is not so much a matter of romance, but a concern for the comfort and well-being of your companion. So many little things where they are looking for one another's comfort, for one another's happiness. They're willing to make sacrifices. Like, I wanted to go to New York, but I don't want to be anywhere that you don't want to be. This was beautiful. I hope my comments and insights added to the experience, but so much of this just speaks for itself. I love this. Good job, Maddie. Usually you have me react to cesspool crap, but this was lovely. <laughs> Speaking of cesspool crap, you should check out this video on me reacting to TV breakups. Like, the, oh man. Uh, who writes that, this stuff? Like, this is so much more lovely, but if you, if you want a good guilty pleasure that maybe, sadly, you, you might relate to, or a cautionary tale, check out uh, my reactions to the very best of TV breakups. To our LGBTQIA viewers and allies, happy Pride Month. Thank you for joining us here at Men in Light. What do you think of David and Patrick's love story? Does it speak to you? Why or why not? What other couples should I react to? What other healthy relationships would you like me to look at and, and talk about exactly why they're healthy and how to duplicate that in your life? Let me know in the comments below. As always, keep shining because we need your light. And there's the video right here that I was telling you about. Click on it.